if you could go out with one Villa player for, for New Year's Eve night, who would it be? I don't know, who would you? Alan Hutton. Alan Hutton? Yeah, I think he'd be lively. I mean, most of our local rivals, when they get anything against us, they seem to celebrate it like a win, which is not how I like to operate. It's quite a small time. But sure, but... Each they're, of their own. Just no, a little prank. There. No. Prank Sinatra. Didn't see that. No, OK. And somebody came up to Dan. It was like, oh, I love what you do with the Villa View. It's so good. Love the podcast. Love the podcast. <laughs> I, mean, I am literally half of the podcast. And uh, Dan's just like, oh, yeah, there's Tom as well. He's like, who? Hello, welcome to the Villa View podcast with Tom Julian and myself, Dan Bardell. Things are so grim, I can't even be take the mick out of Tom <laughs> Thanks. at the start of the podcast which tells you everything you need to know about the way the weekend has gone once again it's not gone the way any of us or Aston Villa Football Club would have wanted but we'll be with you for the next hour or so to try and dissect it again I feel like the podcast getting a bit samey now I feel like every week we're talking around similar topics because I, nothing's changed. Do you know what I was just about to say? Like it feels very much like the mood before the podcast that we did about Sheffield United um, and um, it just was like, just we were so unhappy. It's a slog, and and this feels exactly the same. You know, two nil down, uh, two nil loss against West Brom at home. Atmosphere, as we're going to come on to, seems to be at an all time low. The players aren't aren't together. It seems the the management looks a little bit like. They don't know what they're doing with this current crop. The fans don't know. The fans seem to be at odds. Yeah. In all, in all, in all honesty. I mean, we'll come on to that. I'm sure. And we're we're sitting here in a very hot studio. Yeah, not ideal conditions. A little, a little uncomfortable, and and we've got to talk about it for the next hour. Having said that, um, I said last week that I didn't think we'd go on for an hour, and we did. So yeah. there's always stuff to talk about at Villa, and there is there's some positive with the ladies' team and that kind of stuff. Um, Jacob Ramsey made his debut. There's a couple of positives, but on the whole, we're clutching at straws. <laughs> what I will say is that when me and you are doing this, we often come out of it thinking, oh, when it's bad, when it's grim, like it is at the moment, we always think, ah, that was difficult. I'm not sure whether people are going to really relate to that or enjoy it at all. But I will say that the comments that you make after the podcast, when we've done something like that, it does make us feel better yeah, and about doing this. I guess uh, to, to come back to that, everyone does relate to it because everyone's feeling the same. Everyone's disappointed. Whether right, We're going to talk about it, but whether you're a booer or you're not a booer, everybody's annoyed. There's nobody that's happy about this situation. No. So I think everybody can relate to the fact that Villa aren't playing very well. We've lost to um, a... a a semi-rival, I would say, in terms of in b- both where we should be challenging in the league and obviously geographical proximity, um, and nobody's very happy about it. I can't really relate this to anything. I'm trying to think, like, for example, if someone's doing a radio show, they're like, I'm going to make this show good, I'm going to make it happy. Whereas we come here, we've got absolutely no chance of doing that. Like, Not right now. No, we're just finding a losing battle before we've even started. But people are tuning in to be miserable, which is a weird concept <laughs> yeah. to me. Like, I can't get my head around it. There's no other thing other than football, well, other than sport in general, where people are going to listen to this and just they know they're going to be miserable. Yeah, do you ever listen to an album or watch a TV programme and go, oh, I hope I'm going to hate this? I think I will have probably, when I was younger, had breakups with girls and stuff, and you know what, and you just think, I'm going to put on some miserable music. I think I was one of those when I was younger. But it's still class miserable music, isn't it? It's yeah, like, well, you, you still, well, yeah, I'm, sure, I'm sure Dolan wouldn't judge it as class music. When I put on my Paolo Natini, or something like that. I mean, that was one of the last people I was expecting you <laughs> That's the end to, to say, one I can think yeah, of. Yeah, but, but uh, he's a bit sad. Yeah, I mean, we're all sad. Maybe Paolo should come and do this podcast or be the soundtrack to this podcast. I don't know much of his music, if I'm being honest. He's a, he's a Scottish guy, isn't he? So I wonder oh, if I've he's... just said I don't know much about him and you've said that I should... <laughs> like, you've spoken to me like I should know he's Scottish. I was just trying to think if he was a football fan and where he, where he actually comes from, but I don't know, so let's pointless let, conversation. Let's leave the Paolo conversation. Aston Villa nil, West Brom 2. Um, two goals in four minutes, Dan, just before half-time sinks Villa essentially um, but it all could have been a different story Tammy Abraham has a glorious chance early on and should do a lot better we, we started off okay you know but I, I, I didn't sit there and think oh it's like watching Brazil but I did sit there and think right well, that's a positive start that was a more positive start than I was anticipating especially off the back of a last minute defeat the, ga- the game before I mean I saw Tyro Mings interviewed today and he was like saying he was hoping that they take some positivity from the 3-3 three, three, the comeback and they take it into that Brentford game but it didn't really mm. happen for, for whatever reason so it was good that they didn't take that negativity of losing in the last minute they didn't take that in then to the the next game against, against West Brom but 
I mean, by half time it had completely sank, but the atmosphere was okay. At that point, we were we were playing okay, and it does become a, dif- a different game if Tammy Abraham sticks that in. Should should have done better first touch was a bit off. I felt we pressed well, we won the ball back, and again. It happened a couple of times towards the end of the Brentford game where McGinn pressed high and we won the ball back high up, which is the way we want to play. And again, it happened in the West Brom game. But Elmer was a, a bit slow to get the ball out from un, from under his feet. It was almost like he was surprised that it, the ball had ended up right. ended up to him. And he, he was OK on Saturday. Not, not brilliant, Elmer. I'm not having to go at him. But he was almost like he was surprised the ball came to him. He's played Tammy through and Tammy's first touch was just off. Sam Johnston was alert, smothered, smothered the ball, makes a... Makes a good save, so that it's a turning point in the game for sure. But then pff, there's thousands of moments happen happening games. Yeah, there was other chances, wasn't there? Courtney Horse had a chance. Tyrone Mings, uh, John McGinn had a had a long range shot quite late on in the game. But it's those it's that time just before half time where Hal Robson Cano and I mean it's to, to me that's a lucky header, right? I mean, Dave Smith said it was unstoppable. No keeper in the world. Would have saved. It, I mean, Kalinic is huge. Yeah, and, and a lot he's of people were stretch. saying that. I just, at the time, I just, I didn't even realise it had gone in, and it felt like the whole of the whole team was surprised yeah, when totally. Kyle Robson Canu ran off celebrating. Sure. It was almost like it hadn't gone in, like it had just gone over and dropped behind the goal. He's six foot seven, six foot eight. I'm surprised the ball managed to go over his head when he's on his line as well. It's not like he's off his line at all, but he's managed to get lobbed on his line. And Hal Robson can is not facing the right way. He's kind of, It's a flick on, essentially, isn't it? But it flicks it just high enough. It's, like, it's the perfect angle, there's no doubt about that. But I don't feel like Robson Canu obviously tried to get it towards the goal. But there's like if you did that 99 times out of 100... That's not working. Yeah, I was exactly gonna. You just took what I was exactly what I was gonna say, and that he tried that again, and he wouldn't. He wouldn't be able to do it. Yeah, it's just one of those things at the moment when the look, when the looks, not even the looks against you. When you're on a bad run, stuff like that just seems to happen, doesn't it? When you when you're going well, you're the ones getting the getting the look at the lucky goals and the look and the lucky breaks, but we're not getting that at the moment, and nor do we really deserve to be getting any of that stuff if I'm if I'm being honest. But then the important thing you do when you go one nil down so late in the first half is. You don't concede again. Yeah. And again, I sound like I'm giving myself mammoth praise here, but I said to my dad about 30 seconds before they score, I said, they're going to score here, Dad. Well, and they did. It came out from a from a clearance. I can't remember who it was, but it was, it was a fairly aimless clearance out. And, and the West Brom centre-back kind of knocks it back in. Hurahan loses it uh, in the middle of the yeah. park. Jay Rodriguez picks it up. And again, it's a, it's a good strike from Jay Rodriguez. Deflection. Yeah, you're right. But it's... it's just that's unlucky that yeah that's un, that's unlucky but I mean by the keeper by this point apparently was seeing double right so even if Javier hadn't taken a deflection he might have struggled, might but, have struggled with it I mean he, he he dived and he's not far away from it but it, it, it deflects so well that it hits the post and goes in it couldn't have been any more perfect for Javier I mean yeah he's like he couldn't possibly hit the post and just come out yeah could he or let's, just go the other side let's, of the get, let's get a little bit of fortune but Teams aren't having to do much to beat us and score past us, and that, right. that's the problem. I don't look at either of those goals and think, "Oh, well done, West Brom, well played." I just think it's just a lack of intensity. It's a lack of intensity towards going to going to the ball. Rodri- I feel like Rodriguez could have been closed down a little bit earlier. Like you say, he's got a good, he's got a decent shot off, has the deflection has, has has helped, but you've got to be savvier than that when you've gone one nil down. You've got to be going in. At just at the worst 1-0 at half time they're not 2-0 and then you're really struggling because West Brom are good defensively oh, and they're, they're a good side West Brom like they're, they're challenging for, for playoffs if not if not more uh, Darren Moore I, I'll be the first one to put my hand up and say when they gave Darren Moore the full time job I was one of the guys that were like that's a bad move I feel really? like yeah, I, I, felt, I felt like he'd, he'd done well to, to galvanise West Brom but it was one of those moves where he wasn't. It was a bit like with Sherwood. Like Sherwood did well to save Villa, and then you think he but, should have been binned. But then he he's not the right man long term. I thought exactly the same with Darren Moore. I was totally wrong, and and I know a lot of people said that's a good appointment at the time. Do I think like, he earned it. I, I do. Yeah, he, I, he played. He he'd done his time at West Brom, so to speak, as well as a coach and as a player. I think he'd earned that. Chance. Totally. But I feel like it's a bit like now with again with Roberto Di, Di Matteo at. at Chelsea back in the day. Yeah, um, I know what you say. It was just a bigger job, and I feel a bit like that with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer now. He's doing super well, but if you give him the full time job, our oh man, you're going to improve. 
again I would say no but it's a different thing same with Darren Moore and I've been totally proved wrong thus far and, and good good for him but not good for him against Villa that was annoying no, I mean if it pains me to praise West Brom but you know what they were down dead and buried before he got he got that yeah, job totally but they gave him that that job and it just restored a little bit of feel good and they went down in, I mean you can't go down in the right way saying that Villa went down in completely the wrong way <laughs> yeah but they went down in the right way there was a bit of positivity he'd lifted them he'd given them something so that, that that effect then carries on into the next season when we went down we were already gone we had the chance to just say give the job to Brian Little until the end of the season or something like that just to get the fans back on side create a bit of a, a good atmosphere we give it to Eric Black mm. God Awful, awful man. Do you know, do you know if uh, Brian Little wanted the job? I don't know that. I was no. just, he was the yeah, first yeah, example yeah. that came into my head. So we go down in the wrong way, and then that, then we start the next season badly because we haven't shifted that negativity. So fair play to West Brom because that, that's a good decision. It, well, yeah, it has worked out to be a, a brilliant decision. And I think there's the, the other side of that coin is when you employ somebody who's so familiar with the club as a coach that there's a potential that there's a kind of Powerliness about it, and when you're already down and dead and buried like West Brom, pretty much were, you know that's that's okay. And again, I just thought that he was maybe too close to the club. Turns out I was wrong, and being close to the club was was bang on, like you just said. Yeah, and all the other appointments you've talked about as well, like Manu getting Solskjaer in, like when Marina got sacked, you wouldn't have ever thought that was going to happen. But it's a good move. It's, it's, I know what you're saying in the long term, but for now, that's a great appointment because he's done exact. He's done more than I could have ever hoped it would have done. Yeah, I mean, Solskjaer had a very... <laughs> the welcome I mean, to the yeah, Manchester United You can podcast. see how desperate we are not to talk <laughs> about Villa by talking about West Brom and Manu. Manu were very savvy in when they appointed Solskjaer because he had a very kind run. I think there was uh, four of the first five games or something were bottom clubs. But then he went on and beat Spurs, um, beat obviously Chelsea in the Cup just gone. Chelsea aren't obviously playing that well. Beat Arsenal, I think, as well. Yeah. Uh, so so it's turned out to be right whether it's right for next season or not we'll wait and see but they've bought from the Man U example they've bought in someone that completely gets the club he understands what the fans want he understands the club he's been in the position of playing for Manchester United and the pressures that brings so he it's a, it's a, it's a great appointment we've done a similar thing with, with Dean Smith we've, we've got someone in that understood the club and, and the first the first month or so the first six, seven weeks or ten weeks or whatever it was we're thinking Oh, he gets it, he gets the club, we're, we're going to keep getting better from here, we're going to improve, but then it's just gone to what it is now and I, I can't explain it. Yeah, it's, 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 it's so frustrating. Um, let's talk a little bit about the atmosphere then, because we move into the second half, things don't go right, Villa have a few chances, but still can't can't create that. I mean, Jed Steer, Jed Steer comes on for Kalinic at this point. I mean, I'm asking questions about that. Well, we can talk about that as a separate thing unless you want to do it now. I mean, it makes sense to do it now. Yeah, so, so Lovren Kalinic um, suffered a head injury, collides with Jay Rodriguez not long um, before the half-time whistle. Had to be replaced by Jed Steer at half-time. They say that he should be back for Stoke. There was a couple of questions. Um, did uh, John Mao... 55. Half time versus West Brom was very strange. I sat lower Doug Ellis and at half time it looked like Kalinic's head had gone and he was just having some sort of breakdown. Yes, he did not have a great game, but I felt I felt sorry for the lad. He just looked broken and I don't buy the injury story. I mean he did get a he, got clattered. he got a clattered from from the West Brom player, I can't remember who. It was West, Rodriguez. Who he was not. Oh no, it wasn't Rodriguez. It's not particularly relevant, but I can't, he got clattered anyway. Why in Livermore? Don't get me started on the referees again. It's not why we lost, but he <laughs> A horrible little man, whoever he was, I forgot his name. Someone's messaged me with his name, but just a horrible li- little man. Just inconsistencies. That was a that was a foul. That was a, that was a booking. D- doesn't happen. I don't think that. I, again, I, I hate it's to late on the goalkeeper. It's mate. not late. The the ball is there to be won. Mm. He clatters him. It's a free kick. But I don't think up? it's a booking. Are he studs up. No, I don't think so. Mm, it's a booking in my opinion. And I think he hits him with his leg rather than his... Like, I mean, you're always going to start... You're always going to start... No, genuinely, I'm not. I'm I'm bang in the middle here, and I don't think I think it's a foul. Because he he doesn't get the ball, but I don't think it's booking, and he has every right to go. I mean, I've got to start attacking. Sorry, I've got to start. No, sorry, I've got to start attacking notes during the games because some of the inconsistencies from the mm. referees are just I, ca- I cannot believe what I'm saying at times. A couple of West Brom things got let go where I thought there could, should have been a booking. I think Tammy Abraham got kicked in the head. Nothing. Then Tyrone Mings argues a decision. Oh, straight straight in the book. Straight in the book, Tyrone. Goes. I don't want to get onto the referee. Like no. say that's not the reason. No, I can't even remember how we've gone to the referee. Uh, John John Mal fifty five Kalinic. I mean, I think he was it. I personally, I was right behind that challenge. I thought he was he was injured, but I'm asking questions why when he was getting the treatment, 
either he didn't say something or there's a language barrier problem because if he's saying he's dizzy and he had to, he's had to come off because of dizziness, I'm presuming he was dizzy at, straight from the point of injury, so why hasn't he been taken off straight away? Villa haven't really come out and talked about that, so I can't really say too much because I don't know. Mm. But it seemed, if Jed Steers had to come on at half-time, it's only that moment that's caused him to feel dizzy. Kalinic, yep. it should have happened straight away. You can't take risks risks like that, and you never know. If he's if we've got Jed Steer in goal, he's not feeling dizzy. We maybe don't concede those two goals. I mean, probably do, yeah, but you know, do, yeah. you know what I'm saying. Yeah, there, yeah. You? you can't take risks. It's like the half-time whistle's gone, and he's gone down at that, at that point. It's... It's a strange time to go down when the when the half's over. And I mean, even for his personal safety. Yeah, you know, no, yeah. He, I mean, yeah. I've not even touched on the safety element. If he's feeling dizzy or he's got double vision, have you ever had concussion? Uh, yeah, I knocked myself out on the last day of uh, sixth form at school. Doing what? You know, I had a big, <laughs> had a big slippy slide. I had a big slippy slide. Sure. And I went. I was riding along, sliding along. I banged my head off someone's knee. Oh. And then, like the whole the rest of the time's a bit of a blur. I just remember ending up in the change room and apparently I was chatting absolute rubbish. I got taken to the nurse and I like missed all their last day six form celebrations because I had concussion. Oh, wow. Yeah, good times. There you go. Fair enough. I got concussion once in um, playing football and um, I'd done a... I, I mean, it, it set up a goal, so it was pretty amazing. But the ball kind of came over, and I just flicked it on, and the other guy came straight into the back of my head. With, and, with his feet? Or no, with his, with his head. Ooh. Yeah, and, and absolutely... But I was I was spinning, yeah. so I went off. I couldn't come back on. To 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 the point about football, there was no way that I could carry on playing uh, at a very amateur level. Yeah. And I don't know how Kalinic felt. If it maybe looked, the Disney came on, I don't know. Well, in, we'll never know. In I know you don't like me talking about this, but in the NFL, obviously concussions are a typical typical uh, risk, and they have a concussion protocol that you've got to go through. You've got to sit with an independent doctor if if. At any point, you feel dizzy or you feel anything like that. I, there's a there's a big movement. I think it's a Daily Mail, like trying to trying to reputable pro- then. Yeah, trying we're trying to um, highlight concussions in football. I think it's concussions through heading, which I don't buy into. But more like if you have a concussion, I, I think it can be it can grow in, into a concussion. Yeah. But you you need to be sort of seen by by a medical professional. Um, I, I guess the physio and stuff would have would have dealt with it, but he obviously carries on I one mean, way or the other. He there should be on. some kind of rule where if the goalkeeper needs to get some treatment or something, you should be allowed to just bring the other goalkeeper on whilst you whilst he's getting looked at. Yeah, because a lot of time managers. I know it sounds, and I'm not saying Dean Smith did this, but they don't want to wait, not waste a substitution because of how the game's going and stuff. And it is like the game now is so big and. Every decision, every decision a manager makes is evaluated. It, it can lead to them losing a game. Every little decision, you should be able to roll Jed Steer on for ten minutes, not literally roll him on, <laughs> but like a ro- like a rolling sub. I, I think that's a great idea. Thank with, you. With I'll a, take it to the effort. With a with a five or ten minute limit that. If, yeah. if you can't get your original goalkeeper back on, not even just goalkeepers, just footballers in general, just oh. bring, just, just bring oh, someone no, on. I'm not so keen on that though. No, no, because it, think? It, it would end up being like a power play, wouldn't it? That's like, true. Okay, bring, just bring goalkeepers. An extra forward on for a corner. We'll stick it to goalkeepers then. Yeah, but but goalkeeper genuinely makes sense because you can you can even li- injuries with goalkeepers. But you can roll a <laughs> you can roll a player off if he's injured. You can't yeah. roll a goalkeeper off because you can't carry on without no, him. No. So the goalkeeper actually makes sense. It comes down to like the QPR one on New Year's Day when Lumley was taking 15 minutes to. Get to get to get treatment, and it was a fast. They should have been able to just bring the goalkeeper on for ten minutes while they tried to patch him up. Yeah, I think it, that, it alleviates all pressure as well. I think that's a good stuff idea. like that. Thanks, mate. Uh, yeah, and it doesn't mean a genuine uh, again for the safety of the player. You don't rush it, and you can probably check him out. And that's boring, chat, isn't it? Yeah, I mean I've instigated it, but it's boring. Uh, what did you make of Jay- Jacob Ramsey? Uh, did his best. Tr- tried his best. He's. Co- He's Had come a half off. effort. Yeah, it's it's difficult for him to, for a kid. He's seventeen. It's difficult coming into an one an atmosphere like that to a team that's not playing, but particularly well. It's it's just a difficult one, isn't it? He, he didn't do any, he didn't do anything wrong. The crowd got behind him. He made a, made a couple of mistakes. So and the fans let him off. I wish they'd do that for everyone on the pitch. But that's another story that I'm sure sure will come on to because surely all players just need support but we're coming on to that anyway yeah it's difficult to say because West Brom 
they knew they didn't need to do anything in the second half other than they knew if they just defended properly yeah. we, we, we would run out of ideas and run out of steam and that's exactly what happened and fair play to them they saw the game out very comfortably after seeing the way Sheffield United didn't see the game out the week before at Villa Park West Brom just put on a de- I, want to say, I was going to say defensive masterclass but it was just easy it's just easy at the moment. They didn't really have to do anything to snuff us out. We didn't make enough happen. Yeah, Sam Johnston saved from from McGinn uh, again. As I say, a couple couple headers. Elphick had a header off the bar. Yeah, uh, off the bar. Yeah, um, Courtney House put uh, Courtney Hall's put in a lovely ball for Tammy Abraham, who I think Abraham was offside in the end, but headed just wide of the post. Yeah, I remember it. And that was that was I mean, that was a beautiful ball. He played well, considering oh, Courtney Hall. Yeah. Considering Brentford, he'd got panned. In the area where I was, where I was sitting, and he didn't have, he didn't have a comfortable game. He was very good. He was our best player, I thought, on Saturday, which was encouraging in an unfamiliar position. Sheffield United, he got panned, and then no, then no, no, it was Brentford, in, it was Brent, no, it was Brentford in the week. He didn't play against Sheffield United. Well, my he was Wigan. He came on for thirty minutes, and when we were two 0 down, and yeah. we lost three 0 You interrupted my trail of, Sorry. trail of thought there. Sorry. Um, I was having, I was talking to my dad about this during the game. I was thinking, like, when you're coming in from the cold, Brentford's not an easy place to play. It's a really tight pitch. You don't get as much time on the ball. Obviously, Villa Park's a bigger pitch. He's kind of in the groove because he's played the, the game before. So it's, it's a more comfortable situation for someone coming in, although not verbally at Villa Park, but it's a more comfortable situation for a player to come into than being chucked in at Brentford on a tight pitch where you get no time on the ball. It's not the, not the best pitch. So he looked better with more time on the ball, I thought. But he had a good game. One of uh, one of the players that, that you and I talk about a lot and, and we like is, is Conor Hurahan. I didn't want to talk about him generally because I feel like we talk about him quite a lot and everyone knows our position on... To be honest, it's on not Conor. about him. What we're going to come on to talk about, it's not about him. Exactly. So Conor Hurahan gets taken off, walks off, claps the fans, booed... Booed by... How, what, how, what's the percentage? I mean, I can fans? only talk about the whole 10 because that's where I can hear it. Yeah. I'd say it's probably 50-50. Yeah. But he's, it was very vociferous, let, let's say. Yes. Yeah, so but then Rollo, said, Rollo, who sits in the Trinity, said as he's sitting down in the dugout, coming towards the dugout, the abuse was unbelievable. Yeah, I was going to say as well. there was some jeers, there was abuse. It was very, very toxic. I just wanted to... You were there. Yeah. I just wanted to get your kind of opinion. Not opinion. I, I, we know what your opinion is going to be, but I just wanted to give the floor to you, essentially. Yeah. F- first off, it, this is my opinion, because there'll be people that completely disagree with everything I'm about to say, and I've got 10 bullet points in front of me. So there'll be people who think this guy is on another planet. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Obviously, that's what I think yeah. of the people that have got a differing opinion to me. Yeah. It's not about it being kind of horror, Hannah player, obviously, me and you like. As you've said, because it happened the week before with Yedinak, although not to the same extreme, and I completely disagreed with that, although we didn't talk about it. Mm. I, d- I didn't like that. It's happened. I've seen it happen to other players in the past as well. I think it, I didn't particularly like Bakuna, but it happened to him last season. I didn't like it then. I'm pretty sure I've seen it happen to Grealish mm. when he's been subbed, who's now the golden boy of the Villa Faithful, and, and rightly so, but there was a time when he was getting pelted. Balassi got pelted the end of his end of his little stint here slightly yeah, different this was just uh, it felt another level to me This it, and what I don't like about it I can even just about cope with the booing fine but some of the abuse it's just so personal and it's so so horrible and horrific like absolute hatred and I think the guy cost one and a half million pounds if you look at his look at his output and what he's done for Villa he's hardly been a massive problem for the club has he but you'd have thought I don't know you'd have thought Jolly and Lescott I don't remember Lescott getting abused like that and he was horrific for us mm. I just don't get what how people think it's going to help how, that, how does that help how does that help the player how does that help Aston Villa Football Club I just thought the atmosphere in general it's, it's so so poisonous and as we spoke about last week I've never left a game early I felt like walking out after that if I'm being honest and it was nothing to do with what I've been, what I saw on the pitch. Nothing to do with the players. Nothing to do with the management tactics. Anything like that. Just the hostility. And people will say, "Oh, you need to man up or whatever." I don't mind hostility towards referees, towards the opposition. As I well know, yeah, you're supposed to be the, you're supposed to be the twelfth man. Mm. And and sometimes we just completely hinder ourselves because it's so negative. Our players genuinely are afraid to do things because they don't want they don't want abuse from the crowd. And James Rushton tweeted a little bit about this. Conor Horan got the ball on the halfway line in the first half. There was zero movement in front of him. I'm talking nothing. Players, every player in front was just standing still. No one was making an angle for a pass. There was nothing. So to keep the ball, 
he, he has to go backwards. He goes backwards. Jesus Christ, you'd have thought he'd have pissed on people's grandkids or something, the reaction <laughs> people have come out with. It's unbelievable. Yeah. And hat fans hammering him, you're useless, whatever, all the expletives yeah. in the world. Later on in the game, or before that point in the game, McGinn gets the ball there, does it does exactly the same thing because there's no, no, nothing ahead of him to pass on, and it's, oh, help him out, lads. Do him a favour. He can't do it on We've his own. We've got yeah. McGinn. <laughs> it's the double standards I don't like. Yeah. You sh- you've got to be the 12th man. You've got to be be- getting behind the, the players, and it, at times it doesn't happen. I There's an element of Villa fans, and it isn't everyone at all, because there's like-minded people like me that think exactly the same as as what I'm saying. You think the same. The people that sit, a few of the people that sit around me think the same as me. Rollo, my dad. So I'm not on my own with, with with this opinion. But when things are going well, Villa fans are brilliant. All of them. They are phenomenal. Some of the best fans in the, in the land. The atmosphere can be absolutely electric, and I love it. When things are going bad. When the team needs a little bit of support and a little bit of encouragement and you need that good atmosphere, it's not there. Mm. It, it doesn't come. And, and it is miserable at the moment. We're all miserable and there's frustrations and there's 10 years of frustrations or whatever. But abusing your own players like that, I just I just can't I can't get it. One of the blokes that sits in front of me, I think if he was to watch a video of himself for 90 minutes, he'd be embarrassed. Mm. All our players are the C word. They're all rubbish. He's sitting there like he's Pep Guardiola. He knows every, everything about football. Alan Hutton does something wrong. This guy does not say anything. But if other other players do stuff wrong, he's up off his C, C word. They're all they're all useless. It's 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 unbelievable. And if those players that he doesn't like do something good, he just sits there in mm. silence. I've got to be honest. I, I wanted Connor to score on Saturday. I wanted to see what this guy. I wanted to see what this guy would do if Connor scored. What does he does he not celebrate? What does he sit on his chair? What, what does he do? Because you've been abusing someone the whole game. I bet when he scored against Blues last season, you were off your seat or whatever. I just I just don't understand the mentality, and it does not help anyone. It doesn't help. It doesn't help Villa. It doesn't help the players on the on the pitch. And it, I don't see that there's a lack of effort out there at the moment. It, it's not it's not down to a lack of effort. What we're seeing at the moment, it's just all over, not working. But I'm sure everyone is working hard at it. And, and, and trying to make it right because no player likes to be out there for 90 minutes getting abused no player likes to play play badly for 90 minutes losing every week it, it just doesn't happen but for whatever reason it just isn't working at the moment how all right, we've got quite a few questions so thank you to everybody again that sent in questions we really appreciate it I've got a bunch of them here how do you fix it how do you fix you an issue like this you can't because those people will never change because they don't see that what they're doing is a problem. I'd love to ask someone who, who, I mean, reply in the comments. If you're one of the people that got up and did gave Connor the abuse when he got, when he got substituted, and people will say, oh, they weren't abusing him. They were just they were pleased that there was a kid coming on. I'm not buying that mm. at all. That wasn't what happened at all. He could have got off the pitch quicker. That probably didn't do him any 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 favours. But I think the abuse he was getting, he was just making a point. He was looking the the stands in the eye who were booing him, clapping him, basically saying. I'm gonna. I'm getting pelted there, but I'm gonna walk. I'm gonna. Well, I should have run off the pitch. I'm gonna come off the pitch, and I'm gonna thank you for your support because that's what I'm supposed to do. We're supposed to be the twelfth man, but but there's an element of the Villa fans that don't want to do it. They come there to just be abusive and moan. Yeah, that's my opinion. Uh, yeah, you've been to game the games you've been to this season. Yeah, it's very much like that, and it, it it's, it's an element. It's not all Villa fans by any stretch of the imagination, but it's a very vocal element of the Villa fans. Yeah, it happened the, the same at Hull, and I mean we did not play well the first the first half against Hull. It was it was crap, and and I, I think the, your best point here is that it's not just booing because Villa are playing bad. That that's. That that makes sense. It's targeted booing at maybe three players that you you've decided you plurally as a you you've decided that you don't like, and so they get all the crap. And there's you've talked about this before that there's always been a scapegoat in every team, even yeah. when we're winning. There's there's scapegoats, and that's that's what frustrates me so much. I was having a, a conversation with um, Simon Back, who's a, a obviously a big Villa fan season ticket holder but a Villa View supporter as well and uh, we were just talking and I was like but what about 
what about my kids? What about your kids? How do you feel taking them to the football? You wouldn't want them in the whole end up. Well, th- this is it. But Although like, that's how I was brought up in the whole end up. Exactly. You, you've you've come through that and, and it's relatively unscathed, I would say. But yeah, I don't but, think it was as bad when I was a kid. Right. Or maybe I've got like hazed memories of it, but I don't remember it being so abusive. And there's a word I want to use, but I can never say it. it begins with v- vitri- vitriolic. 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 Yeah. vitriolic. And that's what it is. The pure hate and anger and people are seething. Like, if it gets you that annoyed, and I hate Villa losing, but I'm not up off my seat just abusing people. There's a lot of Villa View um, supporters who will who bring their kids and say that their kids still love going to Villa and stuff, and, and that is great. That is absolutely awesome. But it does worry me a little bit that if it's it, it can be, like you say, quite a horrible place. To be, and then that's not necessarily one where you want to take kids, and two, where kids want to be either. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a hobby at the end of the day. Yeah, kids can't enjoy sitting am- sitting amongst grown men absolutely l- losing the plot every week. They well, can't. Well, Adam Wright, whose uh, whose video has gone gone pretty viral on on Twitter, <laughs> it's gone way bigger than I thought than I meant it to. Yeah. So if you haven't seen it, Adam Adam Wright says that his, his son doesn't want to. Come watch Villa. To be fair, he's not anyway. saying that's to do with the atmosphere, though, is he? He's saying that's to do with the fact that we've just not been very good for ten years. But it's not, uh, yeah. But I guess the the fact is that it's not fun. It's not fun to be around. No. You know? So, you know, that's a, that's a really disappointing thing to hear, and yet it doesn't surprise me. Danny Kitchen says, "Do you fear for the next generation of Villa?" Fans? I've been saying that for the last three, four years. So yeah, I'd like. I mean, my my boy is 13 weeks so we've got a little while to work this out and hopefully Villa will be better in in a few years at this point but it's it's, it's a, a worry because you know football's more expensive than it's ever been it's um, Villa are, are as bad as they've ever been in, in my lifetime right now we're well, pretty low ebb in the championship so yeah that's probably fair yeah yeah I mean yeah just looking at the at the league table it's not a fun place to be it's an expensive hobby it's supposed to be a hobby, and there's so much abuse in it. Like, I think there is a there. There could be a disconnect between people like you that have, have gone forever, and because I, I don't really fit into this so much, because I don't go. I, I, I spend my money to go, but more, much more occasionally than you. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see. You have a relationship with your dad, which is built a lot, a, a big part of it on Villa and going to Villa, oh. and that's that's a beautiful part of that relationship. Yeah, when me and my dad talk on the phone. Because obviously I don't live in Birmingham. Yeah. I don't talk about anything else other than Villa Rila. And then the next stage of the Bardell generation, if there is to be such a thing. Yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> uh, then it'll be interesting to see how, whether they love the villa and whether there's any point where they go, oh, actually, Dad, I don't fancy this. I want to go I mean, skate park. I, I, I felt for Adam in that, in that fan camps because yeah. uh, putting myself in his shoes, that would absolutely break my heart. Yeah, right. He's gone to the football with his dad. He still goes with his dad. They all go t- They all go together. Mm. Three generations of, of villa fans. And his kids turn around to him on the morning of the game and said he doesn't want to go. I find that heartbreaking and a few fans from other teams have said and I, in some way I agree with them but you can't really put it on kids it's a separate the kids not wanting to go is a, is a different thing to some they were saying about a sense of entitlement and I do think that's a problem with some Villa fans mm-hmm. they have not accepted where we are Deck King I can't remember his second name Deck Kings let's say his name is <laughs> was speaking to me <laughs> On Twitter yesterday, and he he didn't like that I'd posted that video. I mean, I, I, again, I had no expectation that it would make its way across all sorts of different spheres on Twitter. I just thought it would stay amongst Villa fans. I, was, I posted it because I worry about the next generation of Villa fans because they've got so much choice nowadays. It's not like when I was a kid and everyone supported a local team. Mm. All it takes is one kid at school to support Man, Man City, for example, and then little Ralphie, whoever, will be like, "Oh, my best mate supports Man City." I want I want to support Man I want to support Man City as well. That's why when my mate told me his kid wanted to support Villa the other day and he doesn't he, he, my mate doesn't like football at all, I was straight down the shop getting him a Villa shirt trying to encourage him because I want I want that next generation of mm. Brummy kids to, to be Villa fans. It, it, it is a problem, yeah. but, but I, as I say, I don't think an element of Villa fans can accept where where we are. We are in the Championship. We're not brilliant. That is just where we are. Let's try and let's try and change it and get and get get behind get the team playing. Let's all let's all be one at the moment. The only time in that game where the fans, the players, the coaching staff were all one was the minutes applause at the start of the game. Right. From then on, it just tu- it just turns into all this all this abuse. And again, people will say, "Oh, it's the football. That's what it's supposed to be like." It's not. 
Yeah, exactly. I, I, I fear that I'm, I'll get a few comments on here going, like the snowflake comments and stuff. Yeah, that was the word I was looking for, uh, snowflake. That's that's fine if you want to put it, but that's not what it's about. It's about enjoying the football, and if you only enjoy it because you get to call somebody a, a C word for, for 90 players, minutes, then it's that mentality group. I cannot get my head yeah. around. Do what you want after the game. Do what you want before the game. But for that 90 minutes, it should be all about supporting the club and trying to help them get the best result they can because it makes a difference having the fan having the fans on side. It really does. The, the players talk about it. it. It really, really helps. Tyrone Mings has come in. And fair enough, he's played well since he's come in. But the fans are behind him. They're giving him in- encouragement. When a player's struggling, getting on the back is completely counterproductive. Mm. There's players I don't particularly rate or that I think there's a few that I think aren't maybe don't put in everything they can and that, that's a very small number by the way. But I don't spend 90 minutes absolutely hammering them. When they're on that pitch playing for Villa, I want them to do well. But it's almost as if some people don't want those players to do well just so they can be proved right that, oh, this guy's rubbish. Mm. I just, I can't, I cannot get my head around it. What did you make of the Tyrone Mings um, Twitter post? Fin- I've not finished this. Oh, oh if you no, I've got a few more bullet points down here. Tom. Right, come I feel on so then. strongly about it. I well, felt the need to do notes when I don't have to do notes. So far, your rant's gone on for twelve minutes. So yeah, uh, people don't people don't mind that. Carry on. They like to hear what the Dan Bardell so. show. Yeah, no, it's just a little story. Go on. Got a story. The same thing two years ago was ha- happened to Ashley Westwood. Mm. Again, maybe I, maybe it's me that's wrong, but I, I again thought he was a good player. I really really liked him. He was one of my, one of my favourite players. But he was getting a similar kind of stuff that Connor's getting now. He would have got it when he was substituted in a game. Bruce didn't want to let Ashley Westwood go. But he felt he had no alternative. He wanted to keep him. But because of the way the fans were, he, they sold him. They didn't want to. But they got rid of a good player because the fans just weren't, weren't having him and it, was just a, it becomes a point of no return. Mm. And that point was reached with Ashley Westwood. But again, it's, it's just grim. Mm. I, I, I can't get my, I've said it four times. I can't get my head around it. It's just so at, opposite to how, how I've been brought up. Mm. And how I, like, I'm, I'm, as, I'm not saying, there's people that go up and down the country every single week. And that isn't me. I go to every home game. I go to as many away games as I can without my wife getting on my back. <laughs> so I, d- I do that. But the, some of these people who are giving abuse will literally spend a fortune mm-hmm. to go every week. And I say, well, well, I pay my money. I'm entitled to do what, they, what I want. And fair enough. They are entitled to, to, to do what they want. But what I'd love to ask them is, how, how um, the only thing that can come, come off the back of you doing that is negative there is nothing good that can come from, from you behaving like that there's, there's, there's just nothing why would you not want to help your football team why would you want to hinder them that's yeah that's probably pretty much all I've got to say on it I think that's good uh, yeah I, I mean we, we you and I talk about this a lot and it's we're, we're of the same camp so I don't want to I don't want to echo everything you've just said because there's no, there's no point. People know the Villa View cause opinion here, and yeah. that's that's what it is. I, I totally, 100% agree that how can booing your own players help this situation? And it just it just doesn't fit for me. Um, we've got a few questions. Well, we've got a lot of questions on this. Um, Morgan Deacon, what's your opinion on the Villa atmosphere, um, especially towards Hurahan? I think we've we've covered that. Um, Mark Brannigan, why do the fans who jeered and booed when Hurahan was substituted think it's appropriate behaviour? Behavior? I'm pleased that there's other people that think it. And do they actually think that jeering a player is going to give them more confidence to play better next time? I mean, he's McGinn suspended for two games now, so whatever you think of him, I'd say he's in the team for the, for the next two games. Yeah. What are those people going to do if he scores? Yeah. What do they do? Laura Griffin, do you think the negativity at Villa Park and on social media is affecting team spirit in the dressing room? Last uh, last season, you could see the connection between the players as well as between the fans and the team. This season feels completely different, but is that just down to results? Results don't help. Obviously, if things are going well, probably no one's getting abuse, although we do always seem to find a way for there to be. Sure. A scapegoat. It's just uh, everything at the moment it's just a, it's just a bad mixture, isn't it? You're putting all the ingredients in, and rubbish is coming out every everywhere. It's it's no good for anyone. What what's going on? It's not good on the pitch. The manager's not. I say the manager's not at his best at the moment because obviously we've won two games in fourteen mm. or whatever it is. I'm still a hundred percent behind him, fully behind him. But I think I think everyone needs to look in the mirror at the moment. Fans, players, coaching staff, everyone needs to look in the mirror and just say, what can we do to make this a better experience? 
because no one's enjoying themselves mm. literally nobody Sam Fennell when will Villa fans stop thinking we have some divine right to be a Premier League club and realise where we we are where we are for a reason getting v- very frustrated hearing it uh, Rob Henry if things had been different in May last year and we were f- where Fulham are now do you think fans would be happier so Fulham 19th in the Premier League 4 wins 5 draws 17 losses and a minus 33 goal difference no, it would be exactly the same as it is now mm. Because we would be heading for the championship, we wouldn't be doing one in the Premier League, and that's what people want. They they want Aston Villa. I mean, I want this. Want Aston Villa to be doing well mm. in the, in the top tier. Unfortunately, we've gone from struggling in the top tier, which wasn't a very nice one, <laughs> struggling in the champ- to, to now struggling in the championship. Because yeah. we're not going to go up. It's not going to happen. Jack Grealish is going to come back on Saturday, hopefully. But it's too far gone now. Mm. It's too far gone, and. I again think even just putting him back in, it'll give us a spark. It'll give everyone a boost. But is he going to? He can't do it on his own. It's not going to. It's not going to completely just change everything. It needs everyone to be to be pulling in the same direction. Everyone to be doing well. Simon O'Regan, I, get, I think I got that right as well, Simon. So you'll be pleased. Yeah, you to, wrong last week. Pleased yeah. to know. Um, uh, Hurrahan played poorly and has been for a while, like most of the team, and deserved to come off, but people booing him was disgraceful. I'm not saying we should be carrying him off on our shoulders, but F me, the man has been a goal and an, and an assist machine for two years and has surely earned enough credit in the bank to deserve a little I like bit that. more a respect way. and I'm, leeway again, through this tough period. I completely agree with that, but that's, I mean, I've harped on about this in other, the other podcasts that we've done over the last few weeks. How can you single anyone out? Mm. Because they're all, it's all been bad. It's mm. bad everywhere, like, like I just said. I don't get the need to scapegoat. Yeah. I don't get it. That could have been anyone coming off the pitch, to be honest. It didn't have to be Horan. Yeah, he wasn't having his best game. But no one was. Yeah. That's the point. There's a lot more lot more comments like that, and we might get to a few more uh, before the end of the show. But, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of negativity around Villa Park. I'm at a loss on how to change that. You say it's impossible without the results changing. Changing, It kind of feels like a um, a bit of a vicious cycle. Yeah, yes, that's exactly what it is. So, you know, it's, it's, it's grim. Essentially, it's grim to talk about and it's grim to think that your club is, is part of that. But unfortunately, that's where we are at the moment. I wanted to take you back to that Tyre- Ty- Tyrone Mings. You tried to tell me about there about half an hour ago. Yeah, I <laughs> know, but you, you, were, you were in full flow and fair enough. Um, Tyrone Mings tweets, we all need to stick together with a picture of the fans. A lot of fans take it in a way that he didn't mean. He was saying that the fans were good and he wants everybody to be one family, part of the pride, all that kind of stuff. The, f- the picture is, is obviously Tyrone, Ring, Tyrone Mings. That's when he got booked. I'm really struggling here to speak. Tyrone Mings um, kind of roaring, essentially. But the he's, fan- having, he's having a pop at the ref and all the people behind him are having a pop at the ref as well. That's yeah. when he got booked, that photo. What did you make of that? What do you think of Tyrone Mings? What's... Fine, good, but yeah. the fact the facts are that he's coming in, he's done very well, he's hit the ground running to our but we're still shipping goals and losing games. Yeah, we he said he said that much himself. He said he'd swap his, his he thinks his displays have been good, but he'd swap that for four Wins. average performances from him and the, and the team wins the, wins the games Villa have conceded 32 home go- home goals this season uh, the worst in English football's top four divisions yeah, we, we, I think we were saying this when we were winning as, as well or when we were having five fives with Nottingham Forest it's just not sustainable mm. to keep conceding the amount of goals we have yeah. and we've kept doing it yeah Totally. Uh, I just want to highlight this tweet. Uh, James Pearson, Tyrone Minx has really settled into the Villa culture, showing passion, very interactive with fans on social media. We really need players like this to get the club moving forward. Not been with us a month and is a fan's favourite. Do you think that's... And <laughs> but in a month's time, it could be him getting pelted. You, that's exactly what I was trying to say. Yeah. And sometimes, I think when, fa- when players interact with fans, they get a lot more of a... A lot more leeway. Like if you're uh, if you're on social media quite a lot, then you get a kind of cushion. Whereas if you don't, then I mean this this works both ways because all I need him was quite interactive and he he didn't. He, uh, but then it has the mirror performances, I suppose. Yeah. But you're right. It, it, Tyrone Mings has a few bad games and he's the one that's getting booed off. Yeah. <laughs> then the players can't win, really, can they? No. Unless they do win. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, then, then that is maybe it. Um, yeah, hopefully. I mean, hopefully we don't have to talk about this anymore because we're going to beat Stoke, but I'm not sure 
I'm not I sure mean, how that happens right now. They're on a terrible run. They look rubbish. It's a perfect time to be playing Aston Villa, really, isn't it? Yeah. Um, you mentioned it earlier. John McGinn suspended 10 yellow cards this season, so he'll miss the next two games, which is Stoke at home and then Derby away. He's been sat on nine for a very long time. Right. Why is that not passed? Yeah. Well, how's that still sticking around? Comes back around? for Blues. That's good. But I'm worried about that game, Stoke, by the way. Stoke and Derby. You know, I think we're really going to miss him against Derby. Well, Jack's uh, back. But... So that's the next on the notes. Jack Grealish return. Uh, Dean Smith hoping to name Jack Grealish on the bench um, for the Stoke game. Been missing since early December. Um, since since Jack Grealish got injured, uh, Villa have won two fixtures since yep. December the seventh. Not, not great, good. is it? No, it's not good, but. If we could go on some kind of run when he comes back, that would that would be nice. I still think it's too late, but do you it, think, I just want to start winning games again. Do you think Jack Grealish is the potential catalyst for a fan revolution, essentially, of positivity again? It'll lift everyone. It'll lift the players that are on the pitch because they know they've got a very good footballer coming back into the front. It will lift the fans because he is the poster boy for Aston Villa. He's our most, po- he's our most popular player. Everyone, everyone loves him. But again, rewind two years ago, he was getting pelted on social media. Yeah. Well, let's. I mean, wouldn't it be glorious if if he comes off the bench? It's it's one all or nil nil or something like that. He comes on sixty minutes, seventy glorious, minute. It'd be glorious if we had nil nil. Yeah, that's true. He bangs it in, and and we win a game, and maybe that's the the start of a change. I just think even if it is the start of the change, the ultimate goal is to, is to be promoted, and that's it's just going to be too late. We've left ourselves too much to do now. But again, it kind of, it's kind of like if it's a bit like the West Brom situation. Yeah, yeah, if we finish enough. strong, fair. then people will be more confident about this rebuild because there is a rebuild coming. And if we finish mid-table or worse, and then still have to do a rebuild, nobody knows what's happening. I guess actually, does that make any difference? Because then Jack Grealish probably goes in the summer anyway. So I'd imagine so, but you never know, do you? So there you go. I, I did want to talk to you. Just quickly about the return of a couple of players with the West Brom game. You had Gareth Barry came back and Sam Johnston. Yep. What were the receptions like for those guys? Positive. Both both got good good receptions. Barry, when he got subbed, pretty much the whole ground was clapping him, which is nice to see because an unbelievable serve. And whatever you think of him leaving, yeah. I mean, he went on and won some big trophies. Totally. But he gave a large part of his career to playing in Claret and Blue. So you've got to just respect the man. Yep. For me, and he's still a great player because he's always been very slow he hasn't needed to be quick so his game hasn't changed do you think Villa would have been in a different position I mean this is impossible to know but if Barry had signed for Villa rather than West Brom I don't know mate because last season we had John Terry and we still didn't go up yeah it's that kind of player of that kind you're talking about having a lead having a proper man in there we had John Terry and we still didn't do it what could have been eh what could have been Um, anything else you want to talk about from, from the actual game there's a couple of other bits I can get to, but just going going back to Mings a minute. No, no doubt he's been he's been good and he's been a, a ray of light since he's come in. He's been a positive, but he's on loan. Yeah, we only get to buy him if they agree. If they agree, if he was someone else, we get first option. He does well here. Bournemouth aren't the best defensive side I've ever seen in my life in the Premier League. He gets a run of games, which is what he's been missing essentially because of injury, and does well here. They're just going to call him back. Mm. He won't be here next season, or if he is, he'll probably be too expensive for us to buy if he is available. How long has he got in his contract? A couple of years, I'd imagine so. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's just, it's just the loans are, g- are great for getting good players in, but long term they just they just don't work. Because Tammy ain't going to be here next season. It's just a, uh, again, that's like a never-ending cycle. Oh, we get someone on loan that we really like, Sam Johnston. Oh, it's not grass. It's not great. Sam Johnston's just kept a clean sheet of apart playing against us after we've developed him into a great goalkeeper. Yeah. So we do need to... I'm starting to def- definitely think we need to step away from that kind of short-term thinking. Mm. Um, did you see what Dean Ashton said about the game? On no, the EFL show. Good player Dean Ashton was. <sighs> Career cut too short, I know, wasn't a great it? striker. Yeah. And really just good. getting into the England team really as well, wasn't Really good player Ashton. Very, very unfortunate. Um, the disconnect between Alan Hutton, Tommy Elphick and Elmer Hamley was just incredible, to be honest. Murphy should have made them pay twice. When Elphick steps out, Hutton doesn't come across and cover. I know they've got players out like James Chester and Axel Twanzebe, but still, to concede from such a simple cross, it's just the basics, and it's not something that Dean Smith is recognised for. His Brentford teams weren't great defensively either. I agree with the first two statements there. I don't necessarily agree with the third, as we've already talked about. It's a simple cross, yes, but I, th- I feel like Robson Carno gets very lucky with the header. Um, don't really remember his uh, Dean Smith Brentford 
defence. They shipped goals, but they scored goals. I think Stu, I can't remember if it was Stu or Billy the Bee that said to me when we, when, we, when we got him or when he was at Brentford and I would talk about him and say he was a manager that I liked, they would say that you would just have runs like this. I don't think to this extreme, but the run we're on at the moment, you would just have runs like this and then you'd have a really good run. Mm. That kind of fits in with what we've seen yeah. so far, doesn't it? I, I don't know whether we've talked about this before because I forget what I've said and what I haven't said, but if Dean Smith had come in straight away and had this run and then had that seven-game patch where we started to get better, You'd be feeling positive, but yeah, we have that yeah. posit- that great run that we had where we were playing some great football is just it's gone from the memory now. It just feels like it was ages ago because yeah. you stick with what's in the present, don't you? Yeah. Um so it's quite a nice little battle at the top of the top of the championship. I don't care, Tom. Norwich <laughs> Norwich City and Sheffield United I'm not interested occupying we're the top there. spots. Um Leeds United, then West Brom, Middlesbrough and Bristol City. Bristol City and Derby County still actually have a couple of games in hand over a couple of others. Bristol City won their last five. Yeah, they're on good form. Um, team on the other side of that. You've seen QPR have lost their last six. Yeah, they were up with us, weren't they, before Christmas? Yeah, and they, they've slumped. Lost again last night against West Brom. Late, late, late goal. Um, I mean, that's West Liverpool. Brom all over, isn't it, at the moment? I think I saw a... Saw a video clip of Livermore, the horrific tackle. I think it was Livermore. Should have been sent off. Correct me if I'm wrong. And then he pops up with the winner in the 95th. I can't correct you because I didn't see it. Okay. But um, yeah, but Sheffield United and Norwich both won 4 0 this weekend. You know, it's just. Yeah, we're just getting further and further away. Villa on 44 points now, um, alongside Swansea City, uh, Hull, uh, Preston. You know, we're. we're we're mid-table. We're where we deserve to be. Totally. You know, in all fairness, Norwich. They're another one. Last season, mid-table mediocrity. Start of the season, apparently, the a few of the fans were calling for the manager's head. Fuck now, yeah. Now look at them. Just a bit of time. We get, Villa fans aren't very good at this in general. Just we just need some patience. It's grim what we. I'm not. I'm not sitting here for one minute and saying that I'm saying any positives at the moment because I'm not. But we just we've tried so many different things. We've been through so many managers, so many players, and it's just not worked. We've got to just believe in in, in Dean Smith. I get people. Some people say it's just blind faith, though. You've got nothing to base it on. But I think we're at the point where we've just got to give him some time. Also, what else can you do? As you're a fan, so what what else can you do at this point? If you like, what do you do if you sack him? What's what's the alternative to keeping him? Sacking him. Yeah. What what do you do if you sack him? You know, you throw out. Another four months, and then who do you bring in? You know, who who do you want right now? Who's going to change Villa fortunes before the summer? Nobody. It's just pointless. It's pointless, right? If if it gets to October or November, then these people who are saying Smith out already, which I can't believe there are, but there are, then they'll say, "Well, we sh- we told you six months ago." But you haven't really lost anything because if you if you get rid of him by November, it still seems very early to me. And that's about when when do we get rid of Bruce October? Yeah, yeah. But Bruce had had a couple of seasons before then, so yeah. that, that kind of kind of uh, lengthens that. It just doesn't make any sense to get rid of him now. Anyway, he's a he's he's a good manager, and I really hope he succeeds. And if, if he doesn't succeed at Villa, it's not because he's a bad manager. No, he's done too much good work at other teams, but then you've got the people that will say, well, managing Villa's a lot different to managing Brentford and Warsaw, but you're still going to get a team play, playing good, winning football, which is essentially what he did at both. I know he didn't get promoted with with, uh, with those teams, but, yeah. but what, he, what he did do is he got them an identity and got them playing in a certain way and winning most weeks. Bruce won most ways last season, but people didn't really like that. And when you've got an appointment like Steve Bruce, you know that is a short-term appointment. So when he hasn't got you promoted, yeah, you get you get rid of him. We knew this was a long-term appointment where it needed time. It needed to be different. But the players that we've got, with all due respect to a lot of them, if Dean Smith was given a blank canvas, they're not the kind of players that he would sign. Some of them are Steve Bruce mm-hmm. players that play. I mean, I think Dean Smith said this himself. They play. They're moulded in that. In that manager's style, I think a lot, so a lot of the players that are there are capable of playing in Dean Smith's style if they've got other people around them that can. But at the moment, it just all feels like a bit of a mishmash mm. of a few different managers. I mean, still Dean Matteo. There's obviously Dean Matteo. Yeah, players there. So there's like a mishmash of three different ideas, and it looks like that on the pitch at the moment. Yeah, totally. Um, we will see that in the summer. We'll see who stays, who goes, and and there will be an almighty movement around I would have thought put it this way I think the podcasts in the summer will be interesting 
because I think we'll be talking about wholesale changes and a lot of activity. So look forward to that, yeah, Villa View subscribers. Uh, Mark Wilkinson, what would you change? Two up top with Tammy and Codger or Davis? Three at the back with wingbacks? We, we've talked about wingbacks before, it's just not possible no. right now. Our midfield is so poor in possession at the moment, Tammy is the only player that can control the game, but he's constantly having to drop into the middle. Um, don't fully agree with all of that. I think Tammy, Tammy's quality, but sometimes we've seen him go missing not again through fault of his own but just because he can't he can't get into the game now that might be a midfield issue or it might be everything behind him I mean the, the Dean Ashton points have there been a disconnect between mm-hmm. the right hand El Mohamedy on the right wing and then Hutton and Elphick on the right hand side of the, de- the defence there's just disconnects all over at the moment it's just not happening did I just draw on my nose no. Oh, OK. Good. Uh, Even if you had, I'd have said no. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Ian Sweeney. Um, I couldn't really see what the attacking strategy was on Saturday. There was no individual flair that was going to take you past the defender. It was all very workmanlike. Dean Smith mentioned about getting in wide positions, but leaves a tricky El Ghazi on the bench. El Ghazi hasn't played that well, though, in the last couple of games. And I'm one of El Ghazi's biggest supporters. Also, I mean, again, this is shocking. He posted... Someone close to him had died. I don't know whether they died oh. on that on that day, so maybe he wasn't in the right frame of mind to play. I don't I don't know. But then he does an Instagram post. There's people having a go in for doing a post about his friend dying. That was insane. Uh, it's just unbelievable. And these will be Villa fans. I mean, if you are watching this and you were one of those guys that thought that was appropriate, please unsubscribe. Don't watch this. Get get a grip of yourself because that, that is unbelievable. I think that sums it up at the moment. It's unbelievable levels. Yeah, I, I I don't want you watching this content. I don't I don't believe some of the stuff I hear at games, and I don't believe some of the stuff I see on social media. That is insane. Like I can if you've gone to the football and you've had a few drinks and you've shouted that somebody's not playing very well, or you've booed, or you've you've called them whatever you want. All right, I can I can get over that. There's a heat at the moment thing. If you've written something on social media. Something so just as, mourning. as horrible as that, and then you've reread it and gone, yeah, I think that's okay to send. Just get a grip, delete your social media accounts because delete your life because that's just awful, man. It's it's just terrible. All right, let's move on. That's the toxic I'm kind furious. of stu- that's the toxic stuff I'm talking about. That is, I'm glad you brought it up because that is, it's just a joke, an absolute joke. All right, let's move on to some good news. <laughs> Is there any? Yeah, Aston Villa ladies uh, came back from 3-1 down against Sheffield United, uh, incidentally, um, to, to, to salvage a 3 all draw in the FA, Women's FA Cup. They went on to win on penalties, so they move on to the quarterfinals. Good for them. Jodie Hutton scored a hat-trick and scored the, the bench win. Cheers, well. Was he? Yeah, I don't I know. So. Uh, and scored the winning, winning penalty as well, so a nice little game. For Jody Hutton, no Feel relation good to f- Alan Hutton. No, I don't think so. No. Feel good for the for the women because they had a dodgy start. They were absolutely pulverised by Manchester United early early on in the season. But again, I think they're trying to do things a little bit different. They're trying trying to build build something and credit credit to them. They've caught vines. The FA Cup is a good achievement for a team that has Villa's budget because it's not it's not like it's really well funded, is it? The, the Villa ladies, they mm. all they look after themselves. Yep. Pretty much, so it's a great achievement even to get to the quarterfinals. But a great achievement to come back and, and win and win that game the way they did. We we love a comeback against Sheffield United. Absolutely, Aston Villa. Except for when me and you were at Bramall Lane, no, <laughs> no comebacks there. Absolutely not. Uh, so they'll play West Ham ladies in the next round, the quarterfinals. So that's on Sunday, the seventeenth of March, playing at Boldmere St Michael's. Yeah, a few people have asked me whether. Why has that not been played at Villa Park? I'll try and find out, but there must be a reason because I think it would be. It's the day after Villa Borough. But yeah. then international break after that, so there's a there's a, a week or ten days gap after that. Um, I don't, yeah, obviously I don't know, no. but we'll, we'll find out if we can. But congratulations to Aston Villa ladies um, on getting to the quarterfinals and hopefully through to the to the semis. That'd be yeah, good. let's hope so. Yeah, um, I'd like to go to more ladies games, but it's obviously a problem living in London. Yeah, yeah. Um, right. Uh, what about this one from Trevor Hood? Villa has the organisational foundation in place to succeed. The ownership, CEO, director of football and manager. Um, talk of Smith and near-term timelines are stale. Judge him in three years. But in the meantime, he's the right man for the job and the football is what it is. I've said I've said that in the podcast before. He needs two, three years before he can be judged. But that just... It, me saying it sounds like a very, very long time. Like if it's not going well in two and a half years, inevitably he's going to... 
fall under pressure. Mm. Has. I personally believe that three months after the new season starts, we should see some improvement. If that's the case, what is the minimum you would expect to see that Smith is doing a good job? Doesn't necessarily have to be a position in the table. Good, good football? Surely. Yeah, just that, um, just that you could have some hope for the future and that you're seeing something on the pitch that's improving week by week. Yeah. You might get off to a bad start next season, but you just want to see improvement. Obviously, it's kind of gone backwards in that respect this season, but I'm writing it off anyway. But from next season, from having a summer to get his own guys in, get his ethos across, you just want to see that there's an improvement. And I want him to stick to his guns. That's what when people ask about formations and stuff. Part of me thinks, well, you know what? It's not working, but... This has not been moved by anyone. He's still he's sticking to that formation because he thinks that's the formation that works. Yeah. It'd also be nice to see some young players playing either on the bench or, or in the first team, if they're good enough, obviously. Um, the fact that Jacob Ramsey's come in. I think that was one of the one of my biggest problems with Bruce is that he'd always talk about the youngsters at the start of the season and then never play them. Hopefully, again, I, th- I feel like Dean Smith with a with a summer break and not necessarily a transfer window but a pre-season we'll be able to give some of these youngsters a good amount of time and then hopefully we'll see them particularly the guys that have gone out on loan now hopefully we'll see a few of them back and in Clarence Blue deservedly so again you know that with Bruce it's not really his thing Mm. the playing the kids playing giving the youth a chance but with Dean Smith you know that that is part of what he wants to do he just hasn't been able to do it for a variety of reasons this season but you know he wants to do it the intention's there yep. so again in the summer I'd expect to see people integrated uh, AVFC Swan asks a similar question year on for day where, where do you think we should be in the table well I hope competing essentially you just want to be you do that is what you want you just want to be competitive there or thereabouts <laughs> not there or thereabouts <laughs> Tom but you do just want to be competitive and just see that there's some th- some kind of plan in place or there's a plan being actioned um, ok a couple of couple of fun little questions to finish Jack Hurley to take away from all the negative around the club at the minute what is the one thing that you haven't accomplished yet with a villa view that you want to <laughs> Hello. how long could this list be I've already been on a 20 minute rant tonight <laughs> uh, I don't know, really. It's a it's a, diff, it's a difficult one. I don't know what you think. I don't know whether I can even answer it. I've got a couple of things that I'd like to do, and I don't know whether they're possible or not. I'd quite like to do, and again, this might not even be possible because Dan Rollinson can't make it. My can't make it work. But I quite like the idea of a post match live. You know how you used to get like five live phone in six oh six and stuff like that. I quite like the idea of something live where you do like people can. It's either on Facebook Live or Twitter Live or whatever, and you yeah. can you can comment in and 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 we talk about stuff after the game. I think that'd be quite fun. I'd also really like to have a crack at at doing the Villa View does the commentary. So I, I think that would be really fun, and maybe we could do a, a a trial of it at some point. But I, I don't know. They're 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 just kind of personal dreams that I'd love to yeah. have a go at. To be honest, I mean, from a Villa View perspective, I think I've said this before. In the current circumstances, the current landscape, I'm not sure what else there is that we can do. Yeah. Because there's obviously limitations due to just the way things are and due to lo- due to location. For example, if I was living in Birmingham, it'd be no good for the podcast. <laughs> but we'd be able to do a lot more, a lot more after. Like you talk about doing a live show after the game, there'd be scope to do stuff, scope to do stuff the next day mm. in a pub because I was in, in Birmingham. I'm just just not. In Birmingham, location is a big, big problem yeah. for the Villa View. Also, the a problem is that we're never going to get big enough for us to sink in the time. Yeah, that exa- we'd like to totally. So, so we all we all work full time, Dolan and 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 Rolo as well in that. And you know, we this is this is quite difficult to fit in. Uh, we've got Dan. You you obviously do loads in terms of all the videos and going up to watch Villa and all that kind of stuff I've got a young baby we've both got busy-ish jobs sometimes yeah. like jobs the job takes me away it's hard you know it's, it's hard love to i love to do it all kinds of stuff but it just isn't possible and unless someone's going to come in and be a massive backer yeah for the Villa View we're never going to make we're never going to make money out of it or make enough money so that we don't have to work and make this our our job so as the, as the channel goes I just struggle 
to see what else there is that we can do. It's yeah. a shame because it's been brilliant. It's been one of the best things I've ever done. It's been one of the best experiences of my life. I've got, got so much out of it. It's given me a confidence that I could go off and do other, other things, take take me to take me to other places. It hasn't happened yet, but it's given me that that confidence. I think I don't know whether with you, but to me, it's proven to me that I can that I can do this kind of thing. Yeah, totally. And, and I, I I share your sentiment that it's taken me to places that I, I'd never thought I'd go. I went to Borough Away with you, which was which was amazing. The video for the club. We did the video for the club. I played on Villa Park through yeah. the Villa View. I wasn't even doing anything like this at that point, and that's been great. And it's great fun, generally, Yeah. when, when, when we're not playing awfully. I've met some unbelievable people. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and it's, I think it's the people that are yeah. the bottom line. They're so... Villa fans... By and large, are absolutely class. Unless you're commenting on, on El Ghazi's Instagram feed, you're generally a class person. Um, so yeah, well, the, the kind of bottom line is that all four of us have ideas and things that we want to do. We've it's all just, got ambitions just, of, just what, of what we want to do. And for me, as I say, the Villa View has taken me on a, on a great journey, and I've done some done some great things. But it, I haven't achieved the ultimate stuff off the back of the Villa View that I wanted to. And yet that, and that yet hopefully Ryan Hooper um, is challenging you to a squad numbers game oh, I'll smash him mate. I'm going to make this happen you can't challenge me to un squad numbers I'm going to make this happen um, he, he also said something like which squad number of 1 to 11 has yeah, been the question. strongest like of the Premier League era he's going 5 I think he's answered it Hugo Ekiog Martin Lawson Chester Paul McGrath although 7 a contender I saw somebody else put in 10 I think Dwight York Carew Carew Merson, Merson yeah I, I think of any more Grealish yeah yeah uh, I'm going to go with five yeah I think five has been pretty strong one I mean there's been some bad ones as well yeah to be fair i will go five I think he's answered his own question to be fair that Good. would have been my initial instinct well, to answer Ryan Hooper one nil to you then uh, in the squad numbers I don't game think, I don't think that's fair <laughs> uh, Jay Morgan a more light hearted question what has been your favourite bit of <laughs> Villa merchandise I gave, ever I gave you the big one on Twitter that I'd bring something in I didn't do that Jay maybe I, next week I've got a couple of examples Go on, then. Uh, yeah so let me finish um, not including shirts it could be a tracksuit clock <laughs> what random example tracksuit or a clock or anything with a Villa badge on I, mean, I did have a Villa clock when I was a kid um Mine is a Peter with Pro Stars figure. This is Jay's. Lucky enough to get number nine. Uh, so I've got a couple. Go on then. I used to have a Aston Villa duvet, and I'm pretty sure. I think my mum can confirm matching curtains. I had that as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we've got many more. We've still got. I think the uh, the pillowcase. I think. Ready um, for Alfie's room. Yeah, I'm hoping so. Yeah. Yeah. If we get that past the misses. Oh yeah. oh yeah, she she wouldn't oh, let me. Oh yeah, this guy. She, she wouldn't let it. she wouldn't let me use it as a villa case. No. I think she'd let him use it. Um, I always feel bad actually that I never in the podcast and in general life never really ask much about Alpha. I always feel like if you want to tell me about it, you will. Yeah, I mean yeah. that's fine. It's not. A... But people in the podcast might like to know about it. He's doing well. We'll give you a ten-second segment to speak about Alfie here. He's thirteen weeks old. He smiles a lot. He's really, really cute. He doesn't. He's sleeping through the night, and he doesn't cry that much. And Villa have been rubbish since he's been born. He was born to watch the the Villa Birmingham game. And it's all been downhill. It's, oh, it's all gone downhill <laughs> since there. Um, the other one that I had, <laughs> I can't remember why I bought it, but I, I bought one of those um, like little villa kits that you can stick in the window of your car. You don't really get them now. With the, with no, the, there's a lot you, of things you, you don't You lick get. the bit yeah. and then you stick it on. Little pencil toppers as well I used to get with the yeah, kids. Yeah, classic. It's not, being a kid's not what it used to be. I, I also bought one of these, obviously, when I was a kid, so I didn't have a car. And Dad was like, you're not sticking that in my car. And so I just stuck it on my window in my, in my room. I think I probably used to do the same. My mum's saying, that's not going in the car. Yeah. Yeah. You got any? Uh, I would tell you what I was thinking for you. You know, that ha you had those um, video, the Villa video cassettes, where it's like Mark Bosnich telling. Uh, telling people, yeah, I've got that anymore. That's it. I've got a pair of signed Jack Grealish boots that I like. They managed, managed to get them in the lounge. That's pretty good. Yeah, I like I like them. I've got. A and he said no to shirts, didn't he? I think I'll probably go with the Jack Grealish. I've got a better pair of Benteke signed. Got boots anything as from well. being a kid? No, my mum's ruthless, unless I'm, it's in the loft. I thought I would have thought your mum would be the type of person that kind of keeps your room as a shrine. Oh, no, it's the complete opposite. Right. Once <laughs> it's the gym. The day I was gone, that room was redecorated. Right. He's not coming back. She's probably been disappointed over the years with the amount of times I've returned. Yeah. Obviously, probably, 
she may, she may have thought the season ticket would have fell by the wayside, but it didn't. Oh, mate. Girlfriends and waiver all fell by the wayside at that time, but the season ticket remained. It will never die. No. Um, cool. Right, just to finish, there's a couple of uh, couple of mentions that you wanted to... Can you do the uh, charity game first? Because that's the one I've got up on my phone. Sure. Yeah, go for it. Yep. So, I don't actually know his name. His Instagram name is Rich Waity. He's asked me to advertise the fact that they've got a charity game coming up on the 11th of May at the Trico Stadium, located in Redditch in Worcestershire. It's hosted in aid of young people who have been affected by mental illness. The match will feature many ex-Villa, West Brom and Blues players. Names like Lee Hendry, Lee Hughes, Tony Daly, Paul Devlin and Sean Teal are among the many names that have been confirmed decent. and more are to be released over the upcoming weeks. It does sound very decent, Tom. Come down and show your face. Be a part of what will be a memorable day for a wonderful cause. And that, to be honest, that is a, a wonderful cause. Ticks for the event will be available in a few weeks. To get more information, please follow the Football in Mind Facebook page and all the updates will be posted there. I'll keep in touch with Rich as well and try and get a... Uh, i get more awareness about that totally. across we'll, the podcast. We'll put it on our on our social media feeds and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, if you can go down, make sure you do. Yeah, I'm going to try and get down there. If you want, give me a game, Rich. Yeah. Let me play. Yeah. Let the kids play. Let me live. <laughs> let, me, let me play. Give me a game. <laughs> All right. But yeah, we'll keep pushing that because it's a, a worthy cause and it does sound like a very good event. Sounds decent, yeah. Yeah. Final shout. Final shout out yeah. is uh, for Casho76. Yeah, Craig Ashington's asked us to give a hello and a get well soon to William, who's just had a double Sims amputation, which basically means that he's had his feet amputated at the at the ankle. He was born with a condition called, Tom's going to say it because I can't. Uh, fibula hemimelia. Yeah, so it's an absence of ligaments and tendons. So he's in recovery at the moment, been released from hospital. So we hope that you get well soon, Absolutely. William. Hopefully you've listened to the podcast. Um, it's probably not going to make you feel better, but yeah. yeah, we hope you get well soon. You're a real, real fighter, real inspiration totally. to everyone. We wish you all the best, and I'll be keeping up with his progress, making sure his recovery goes well, because he's a brave, brave lad. Absolutely. Yeah, all the best, William and family, Yeah, because um, it's, it's tough for everybody in that family, but... Yeah, keep yeah, keep going and and yeah, keep being a hero. Yeah, yeah, he, that is the word. He's he's a hero. I did say that to his dad. I bet he, I bet he's your your absolute hero, and he will be. Good. All right. A nice ending. A good ending. Yes. Thank yeah. you so much for watching. Um, if you have enjoyed the podcast, make sure you give it a like, subscribe with your post notifications on. If you haven't done so already, we're on iTunes. When the um, when the international break comes, we'll read some of those iTunes reviews. We've said that out. every international Listen, break. Listen, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm already getting the notes prepared yeah. for it. Um, yeah, make sure you check out all the other content. There's uh, fan cams from, from the weekend just gone. That's a, that's a grim watch. Th- there'll be a preview for the Stoke game. Yeah, Rollo and uh, James Rushton are going to meet up tomorrow and do the preview side by side because we feel that works better. Yeah. Side by side mix. Save, save me jumping on, on as well. And make sure you get your comments in if you. Uh, if, you, if you want to have your opinion about about the booing, yeah. either either side, like this is a fans channel. If you are a booer and you 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 want to boo, that's fine. You make your opinion known. As I've said, what. I've obviously spent a lot of time in this podcast making <laughs> my opinion known, but that's what it is. It is yeah. my opinion. There's no right or wrong in in this. It, people do what what they've got to do and what, and what they want to do. So yeah, just my opinion. So not too much hate, please. Yeah, no worries. Uh, this might be the longest podcast ever, so if you're still with us now, thank you very much for watching, for listening. Um, we'll be back next week with a, with another episode. Must be to talk about a Villa win, surely, Come next on. week. It now, has to be. It just it. has to be. All right, have a good week. Uh, we'll see you next week. Up, Up the, the Villa. villa. Ooh, synchronicity. <laughs> nice. If you enjoyed that video, why not watch another? Click the video choices on screen now to go and watch them in full. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking our logo there on the left. Easy peasy.